Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a macro video. And in this short video, we're going to take a look at some of the main advantages and the main disadvantages of quantitative easing, otherwise known as QE. The current background in 2019 ahead of the exams is that in the UK context, the Bank of England's quantitative easing programme, QE, uh, now values £445 billion pounds worth of assets, the vast majority of which has been the purchase of government debt, government bonds, £10 billion pounds of commercial debt bought by the Bank of England. Quantitative easing, QE, is where essentially the central bank introduces new money into the national supply uh, by creating new money electronically. They use this money to buy assets, as we see mainly bonds. And they buy those government bonds from commercial banks, from insurance companies, from pension funds. They buy them from people and institutions who hold bonds. That increases the demand for bonds in the bond market. And because there's an inverse relationship between the price of bonds on, and interest rates, that causes the yield on a bond, the rate of interest, to fall. Typically, those people who've sold their bonds, commercial bank for example, well that gives the commercial bank extra cash or liquidity. Uh, a pension fund may sell some government debt to the Bank of England and use the money, the funds, to buy perhaps some shares of listed companies or perhaps to buy some corporate bonds or some property. Crucially, commercial banks receive cash from the sale of bonds to the Bank of England, that increases their liquidity. In theory, that then allows them more latitude, more freedom, more scope to lend out to businesses and households. The key takeaway point is that QE means the Bank of England is buying government bonds. That increases their price and drives down the interest rate on bonds. Uh, QE works through several channels, through wealth, because high, lower interest rates leads to higher share prices. It, in theory, lowers the cost of borrowing. The government, for example, can issue new debt at a slightly cheaper rate of interest. It works through lending, if the commercial banks lend out extra money to a queue of businesses looking to expand. And crucially, often missed by students, QE works through the exchange rate. If interest rates in the UK are lower, again, in theory, that brings down the exchange rate perhaps through, uh, through an outflow of hot money. In this video, I'll quickly take you through four advantages of QE, and then I'll counterbalance with four disadvantages and make four evaluation points. So if you've got your revision notes on QE uh, around, here we go. The first advantage of QE is that it gives the central bank, Bank of England, European Central Bank, for example, it gives them an extra instrument or an extra tool of monetary policy. They, you know, perhaps they've they've cut interest rates to zero. They can't cut them any further. It gives them an extra club in the golf bag, an extra thing that they can change. Secondly, uh, if you increase the size of the monetary base, increase the money supply, in theory that helps to avoid the severe risk of deflation, particularly in the event of a major external economic shock, such as such as we saw 10, 12 years ago. Most economists believe that without QE uh, in the UK and in the United States, for example, the, the decline in output and jobs would have been much, be, much bigger, uh, but for QE. QE reduces interest rates. So a third advantage is that should help to stimulate business confidence, as well as giving commercial banks some extra money to use for lending. And the fourth advantage is that QE, again, in theory, can help make a country more competitive overseas, particularly if it leads to a depreciation of the exchange rate, which then makes their export industries more price competitive. So there we have four advantages of QE. What about the other side of the argument? Well, here are four disadvantages of QE. The first is that QE has is widely regarded as having contributed caused uh, an increase in wealth inequality because the low interest rates and the increased money circulating around the economy, a lot of that has gone into equities, but a lot of it has gone into property speculation and that has increased house prices as well as the cost of renting property. 
So QE may may well have made the the geographical immobility of labour and housing affordability issues more acute. Again, in theory, if you increase the money supply, there's always a threat, at least, that that could lead to higher inflation in the years ahead. That's the second disadvantage. A third disadvantage refers to the Hayekian or the Austrian School of Economics. If QE keeps interest rates particularly low, if you like, lower than they would otherwise have been, Hayekians, Austrians, argue this, this distorts the market for capital, distorts incentives and can keep alive unproductive zombie companies who can roll over their debt and keep paying low interest rates. And a fourth disadvantage of QE is that with interest rates lower as a result of it, the annual incomes, if you like, from pension funds go down. So the annuities that pension funds can offer to people who've saved are much lower. And that certainly makes life tougher for people who rely on their savings in retirement and crucially those who rely on their occupational pension. Hopefully that gives you a flavour of some of the disadvantages of QE if an essay comes up. Of course, it's really important to be able to evaluate QE. Here are four points. The first is that we're not sure what the time lags are and what, if you like, the impact, the elasticity of QE is on the real economy. It's quite hard to isolate the effect of QE on things like GDP and growth and interest rates because in any macroeconomy, there are so many moving parts changing all the time. Second evaluation point is, as a result of QE, the Bank of England is now a major holder of UK government debt. And that has consequences, I think, for the difference between monetary and fiscal policy in the UK. Some economists are saying, well, 10 years on from the first generation of QE, perhaps we should be a bit more imaginative. Instead of the Bank of England just buying, for example, um, existing government bonds off the banks and pension funds, perhaps we could move to green QE or people's QE. So using QE, Bank of England could fund green infrastructure projects, uh, big, big state investments in education and social housing, and ramping up investment in health and social care. Perhaps we can use QE for a social purpose, an environmental purpose, especially given the proximity and the, the pressing nature of climate challenges. My final point is that QE has certainly helped to keep interest rates very low in the UK, base interest rates and bond yields. Uh, a good evaluation point is to say, well, is the UK economy now too dependent on cheap money? Shouldn't 10 years after the last recession, shouldn't interest rates be closer to a normal level? Three, four, four possibly 5%. Perhaps the UK needs to move back towards normal interest rates so that you have more flexibility if, uh, if economic conditions worsen. QE quite complicated, certainly well worth knowing quite a bit about and providing you've got some good advantages and some good disadvantages in your notes, I think you'll be in good shape for the exams. So thank you.